Hi and welcome to another video to help you stay healthy effortlessly. India is known as the diabetic capital of the world purely because of the high cases of type 2 diabetes among Indians. Now it is not the sugar which is the enemy because we think that the diabetes or the type 2 diabetes is because of the sugar or because of the rice or because of the wheat. Our traditional, our ancestors have been eating rice and wheat as their staple meals but that is not the real root cause and when you are diagnosed with hyperglycemia the solution that you are given is either you are told either you are asked to avoid eating rice wheat or limit your intake of sugar and then you are asked to take oral hypoglycemics yes medicines are required when the sugar levels are high you know when it is absolutely necessary but you know you are in the pre-diabetes state and you know you know that these three parameters are the causes of your insulin resistance then you can start working on these correcting these three parameters and if you are on any kind of the medication then along with the medication you can start working on these three parameters and then you will slowly start seeing your body improve in the insulin sensitivity you can you know enjoy the food that you want to and you don't have to fear sugar or rice because sugar and rice is not the enemy yes the difference between a medicine and the poison is those if you overdo on anything it is going to impact but if you are eating in moderation it is not going to create any disease or damage in the body now the real cause is these three elements which i have also come across through my experience uh, in coaching you know people and helping them reversing the condition and also it has been published in major scientific journals but unfortunately these three parameters are not being prescribed as medicine in today's medical world because it is more the, the more dependency has been on the oral hypoglycemic medications just to suppress and manage the diabetes symptoms so i have also attached the link to the entire study which talks about that the first cause which is the first root cause the major root cause which will be I, i'll be addressing in detail is the chronic stress now the normal stress is okay you know once in a while you take the stress that's fine but when there is chronic and perpetual stress it is directly leading to insulin resistance and the entire stress mechanism which is a fight and flight response it is a healthy mechanism it is an it is an evolutionary mechanism to protect the body but that is only lasted for a short period of time when the body is under the strain of chronic stress or the fight or flight response there is the two main hormones which are secreted in the body which are called the glucocorticoids and the catecholamines now these two hormones are responsible for kind of changing the entire way the body responds to the glucose the body responds to the insulin and how much glucose the body is going to produce and how much glucose will be circulating in your blood because when the body is in the state of fight and flight the body wants to save you from the predator or from the threat but the brain cannot distinguish between a real threat or a threat or a stress in your relationship you know or, or in your family or in your work or you know low motivation or depression or you know low self-esteem anxiety fear all of this trigger the similar fight and flight response which is triggered when you see a threat in front of you but now there is no real threat so when there is threat the body wants to either fight the threat or the body wants to run away from the threat now in either of the situation the body will need energy and that energy comes from glucose and hence the body is pumping all the glucose in the blood to protect you from the fight and flight mechanism now what the glucocorticoids which is the first hormone it does is that it increases the gluconeogenesis so i'll be speaking a few of the medical terms and biological terms just for the explanation and to understand that when this happens the body starts producing more glucose from the reserved you know so your glucose levels could be high even if you are not eating any food because your body is under the state of chronic stress and it also increases lipolysis which is again the breakdown of the fat which leads to the glucose in the bloodstream also what happens is that because of the because of the stress and fight and flight response the muscles are not accepting the glucose molecule because this entire hormone is blocking the insulin receptors from putting the glucose away from the bloodstream so it increases insulin resistance also 
this entire glucocorticoid directly impact your pancreas the beta cells which is responsible for secreting insulin they go and they block or they reduce the secretion of insulin from the pancreas which is leading to insulin resistance so the insulin resistance is not because you are eating more sugar it is because your body and mind is under the chronic perpetual stress and this is the scientifically proven and the, the biological mechanism which is happening in your body in response to the chronic stress because of these two hormones which is the which is the cortigo which is the glucocorticosteroids and the catecholamines so the glucocorticosteroid basically is pumping more glucose in the body it is blocking the insulin from going and attaching to its receptors to send the glucose back into the muscles and adipose tissue and also the glucocorticoid glu glucocorticosteroids are blocking the beta cells in the pancreas from secreting the insulin now because the cells are not secreting insulin because the insulin is not putting the glucose back into the muscles you have to start taking oral hypoglycemic medications the second thing is the catecholamines which is the other hormone which is epinephrine norepinephrine adrenaline all of this again directly lead to insulin and they block the they block the insulin receptors and they increase the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream which is directly showing high levels of circulating glucose in your blood so please understand that it is not the sugar yes sugar we know that in the excess amount is harmful but if you are having the sugar on on occasions on festivals you know uh, maybe a one or two spoons of ice cream or you know maybe one or two uh, uh, two spoons of the sweets that you are having so once in a while you know a tea in the sugar that is absolutely fine but what is not fine is the chronic and the perpetual stress which is increasing your insulin resistance and reducing the glucose uptake from the bloodstream so if you are stressed then please make sure you are working on your mind on your emotions on your life which is creating stressful situation in your body there is a terminology which is known as stress induced hyperglycemia which is stress induced hyperglycemia so the hyperglycemia is purely because of stress so you go to the doctor's clinic you know you are stressed for a couple of days and then you check your blood sugar levels and the blood sugar level is high now the blood sugar level could be high purely because of the stress that you are going through on a daily basis the once you address the stress it can help you eliminate and lower the blood sugar levels and improve the insulin sensitivity back so if you are struggling with hyperglycemia and you are on any kind of medications you know you can consult your doctor you know take support you know of the of the of the expert and along with that you work on your stress levels you know either you know uh, talk to someone take pro take professional help take coaching whatever needs to be done address the chronic stress do not keep it inside your mind and in your heart because this chronic perpetual stress will not allow your glucose levels to normalize with any medications it does not matter how much insulin units you take how much oral hypoglycemic medicines you take this cycle will keep on continuing and it does not matter if you even avoid rice because the food that you eat will be immediately be converted into more of the glucose and that glucose will be again prevented from getting back either in your muscles or in the adipose tissue because you are eating that food in the stress now because of stress what happens is that your sleep gets compromised now when you compromise your sleep the poor sleep directly again impacts the beta cells in your pancreas which is responsible for production of insulin and this again compromises the sensitivity of the insulin production it is been scientifically shown that if a healthy person sleeps only for 4 hours every night that person directly moves into the category of pre diabetes so just 6 days 4 hours night sleep can move you from being healthy into the pre diabetic zone now the sleep gets compromised is purely because of stress now when you are stressed you don't want to sleep and when you don't want to sleep what you do is you start binge eating you start eating unhealthy food you start eating sugary beverages and colas and all the unhealthy products that you eat is just because you are chronically stressed so don't just blame food and you know whatever is out there you can eat everything in moderation when you are in control of what you are eating 
but if your body and mind is under chronic stress your sleep will be compromised which is going to again lead to disruption of the beta cells in the pancreas it it also reduces the fat burning mechanism there is more deposits of the visceral fat around your organs which is again contributing to the insulin resistance and along with poor sleep what happens is that when when you're chronically stressed is that you compromise your movement so you want to sit in one place you don't want to go out you don't want to move or you know you're just sedentary the entire day you know you're stressed at work you're just sitting on the desk from morning to evening that lack of movement is again going to create insulin resistance because it is scientifically proven and it is a biological mechanism when that the body is under movement when you are exercising when you are moving your body does not need insulin for the glucose to be taken up by the muscles so the glucose uptake is independent of insulin when the body is under a state of activity exercise or movement now this lack of movement again creates more insulin resistance and all of these three are interrelated if you work on your physical activity you know you'll start feeling better if you work on your sleep you know you'll start feeling better and ultimately you have to work on your levels of stress now this stress could be in relationship it could be in parenting it could be in marriage it could be in work it could be financial you know it could be some social function or some social threat which is making you live under chronic stress as again i mentioned that normal stress once in a while is okay we are wired to take that stress and overcome that and then the body again comes back into the state of relaxation but what is not acceptable is the chronic perpetual long term stress or we also call it distress which is the real and one of the major causes of type 2 diabetes and when you have all this you automatically want to eat more sugar when you're sleep deprived you want to eat more sugar when you're not moving your body you want to eat more sugar when you're stressed you want to eat more sugar and then ultimately you start blaming that sugar is the enemy sugar by itself is not the enemy yes as i again mentioned that the difference is the dose how much you're consuming is important so you have to work on your stress levels optimize your sleep start moving your body and after doing this along with you know right eating habits proper relaxation then you see that is your body still insulin resistance 99% it won't be because you have taken care of what are the stresses in the body and body is overcoming those stresses along with the improvement in these three lifestyle parameters so i hope this video helps you understand that sugar and rice and wheat is not the enemy you can eat them in moderation provided you are working on these three parameters along with that you know your eating habits are also right which will help your body heal recover and start staying healthy effortlessly once again thank you so much for watching if you have any questions and if you start implementing these and if you see changes in your blood sugar levels please share please please post it in the comments share this video with people who are struggling with type 2 diabetes or who have been recently diagnosed with pre diabetes or type 2 diabetes they can start making these changes and they can start allowing their body to start staying healthy effortlessly once again thank you so much if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and i'll see you soon in the next video thank you so much